Hey everyone, welcome back. Today is going to be an update on an old build. A very, very old build. There are a couple of videos of this concept floating around in the past, but it hasn't taken our new options into account. We have helmets now. We have more frame abilities now. We have new weapons and mods now. You may once upon a time recall the use of Temporal Anchor on Protea as a gimmicky AoE nuke that needed to be fueled by an Archetitron. It was literally the only possible weapon at the time that gave you enough damage to consistently nuke. Since then, we have a couple of other options, such as Fragor, but they're also incredibly clunky, though tons of melees can now work with 12x efficiency setups. Today, we're just going to show you one such smooth option. Guns, on the other hand, still haven't reached this point, even something like the Brahma doesn't do enough damage. Now, with the advent of the new war, we finally have a highly mobile second option, Exodia Contagion. The damage gets nowhere near high enough to match Titron, but like a bunch of other melees now, it is still high enough to mop the floor on base steel path with Temporal Anchor. So this can be another fun setup to try out on non-endurance steel path. Why does this work? Because Exodia Contagion has excessively high damage scaling. It's AoE, just like Titron, with 10 meter radius, and has a fair amount of overkill potential, which is included in the damage absorbed into Temporal Anchor. Zaws also have really good ribbons available, and you can spam Contagions easily, unlike Heavy Slams on Titron being a lot clunkier. And one other thing about Contagion, the damage ceiling was limited. On the other hand, New War brought the Nier set, and we can equip two of those on our Warframe for 200% base melee damage for everything, including Contagion. This is nearly a 2 times damage increase as our only source of base damage otherwise is Sacrificial Pressure. On top of that, we also now have Helmet, so that gives us some options. Either Grouping to kill more reliably and charge Temporal Anchor more easily, or Eclipse and Roar to massively increase our hits on enemies within sight, or even the mighty Breach Surge so that your hits to stack the nuke will feed into itself and even once the nuke kicks off it will fuel even more crazy high damage sparks. Now you may be wondering, how exactly does Temporal Anchor work? It takes a portion of all damage dealt and converts it into a charge you can see under the reticle. It's not true damage and only takes from actual numerical damage you do on screen, so we're gonna go with the Corrosive Contagion for the armor multiplier bonus against Ferrite armor. When Temporal Anchor expires, or when you deactivate it, it will detonate all of the damage in an AoE. I don't think it has any falloff from what I recall. However, only a portion of damage dealt is absorbed, which scales with strength. You also get 3 seconds in vulnerability on cast and a status cleanse. Because all energy, ammo, shields, and health are refunded when Temporal Anchor ends, you should always start a rotation by casting it first. Just keep in mind the cast cost of Temporal Anchor itself isn't refunded, and if you die, your health isn't refunded either, and you will also lose all the damage stored. You will also get immediately pulled back if you die while Temporal Anchor is up and get knocked down that cannot be resisted even with Prime Sure Footed, but all other stats will be restored. Keep in mind stats restored include melee combo as well, which is what we learned for Titron, which is why melee setups work so well with Temporal Anchor. Alright, let's look at that Protea build. This is a little bit unusual, but there's a reason for this. What I would recommend if you can fit it is try running Umbral Intensify instead of Transient Fortitude. The extra 2 seconds in the duration before your 4 pops up will be very useful. It'll also let your 1 last longer. Oh yeah, about your 1. So the shield gate you have when you have a shield grenade active lasts 3 seconds. You don't want Brief Respite or any Augur mods on Protea when you use her because restoring shields with Brief Respite or Augur mods will override the buff shield gate you got from her grenades. You will lose the 3 second shield gate bonus and only get the standard 1.3 seconds. We're still going to pair this with Rolling Guard so that I can status cleanse. Your 4 can do that and also gives iframes, but is a bit clunky for this purpose. Otherwise, if you do actually drop Rolling Guard, I would strongly recommend slotting more strength. Range is super important on this build because that is the entire point of the nuke, to significantly outrange whatever weapon you use to power it. Sadly, it is a hard line of sight check, so even pillars can prevent the anchor from nuking. Therefore, this loadout will favor wider and more open tile sets such as Void Tower or Open Worlds and the Gas City tile set. 235 range does give us 35.25 meter nuke radius though. This range is also super beneficial for a helmet on this particular build, Airburst, which does not care about any stat really except range. 
18.8 meter pole is extremely nasty and this is what we'll be using to group enemies up in one place to smack them down with Contagion. Contagion itself only has a 10 meter radius, so this is a massive plus. The other helmet options like I mentioned are Eclipse and Roar, which while impacted by the negative duration, luckily have high base duration values. But you could refer to Umbral Intensify instead of Transient Forward 2 to get some of it back. Also, Breach Surge would be insane because it will actively feed more into the anchor damage absorbed while it's still active and also creating a mass of nuke particles after your anchor detonates. The two obligatory near mods like I said give a flat 200% base damage to Contagion, nearly doubling its output. Growing power for more strength since the build is lacking it and Arcane Strike and Energize. Strike to swing the Zoss faster, with the fastest types being Stabs and Pole Arms. So long as you build them full crit, it will work out. Now why Energize on a 160 efficiency build? I did say all the stats from Temporal Anchor are reset to the safe state when it ends. Unfortunately, this also means any Energize procs during Anchor are wiped also when it resets, meaning neither Energize alone or 160 efficiency is enough. You need both. The occasional Energize proc outside of Anchor will help immensely since this is a cast heavy build that will drain your energy quickly even with 160 efficiency. Also, set your energy color to black, unless you like blinding yourself with Temporal Anchor as even a dark grey will look bright white. Primary? Literally just an Amalgam Serration and Primary Dexterity stats stick to add 7.5 seconds combo duration to your Zaw. Secondary? Also for secondary dexterity for another 7.5 seconds combo duration, but also as a primer. I picked a pure viral epitaph since condition overload doesn't work with contagion, so the only primer stat that matters is viral. Remember I said you don't want auger mods on when you're using Protea shield grenade, so I filled the double pistol auger mods with prime fulmination and perpetual agony instead. That's 30% extra satisfaction and pushing the AoE out to 13.28 meters. You'll be spamming this as fast as you can when enemies get pulled in. The Zaw? This one is a polearm, but stabs are good too. Miwon, Sikala, and Varji 2 Jai on the parts for maximum crit stats. 20 seconds combo duration due to the double dexterity arcanes on my guns. Rock Rosa with the only primed melee elemental with all in crit scaling. Double sacrificial set for that massive set bonus and stack with blood rush. And we even got the set bonus from one gladiator set. The build adds a total of 825% mod crit at 12x combo. With a base weapon crit chance value of 32%, this skyrockets us to 296 for near guaranteed red crits at all times. Beautiful, isn't it? Gladiator Might and Oregon Shatter lets us scale off these crits for massive crit damage. While we only have one source of base damage on this build, Sacrificial Pressure for 137.5 damage, remember we still have the two near mods. The final mod slot is Flex. I've chosen Prime Smites for maximizing your damage output and making the nuke even more effective, but you can put whatever you want, such as possibly Prime Fury, and then slotting Arcane Fury for base damage instead of Arcane Strike on Protea. I would recommend Neramon for Power Spike for much more lenience on the playstyle, otherwise you absolutely need to hit an enemy with a Zod's health once every 20 seconds to stop it from being completely reset. But that would also open the door for Zenerit. It's entirely up to you on which one you want to take. And the companion? A stock, Panzer. It doesn't really matter since you'll be using the AoE priming with the Epitaph already, but here's what a Panzer build can look like. Viral Quills to spread spores, a Martyr to save your ass if you screw up, Panzer for infinite cat lives, Double Synth Set is being just the placeholder here, since we aren't running Equilibrium and also don't have weapons to holster reload on this loadout, but for normal builds, it's super handy. Tech Assault to dodge lethal hits, Pack Leader heal your cat up in a pinch, which will be ridiculously easy with Contagion as a melee, Radar, and Vacuum. A Stock Panzer that works on any setup like I said. And how does it work? You should be starting rotations with the Anchor as it refunds everything after so long as you don't die during it. And how I mentioned, Energize procs during it will be wiped afterwards as well. Since you need to kill enemies to fuel Anchor, you're probably going to proc Energize regardless during it, hence why you might as well cast Anchor at the start of the rotation. And then you can drop your dispensary for more energy, airburst to suck enemies and throw contagions. Once you get enough stacks, usually several million, just head to the nearest hotspot with enemies on your radar and let it detonate or uncast it. Honestly, this probably works best on campier setups, but the most important part is you want a tile with clear pathing to you. Walls and poles and a bunch of stuff in the way sucks and is no good. 
for example, this void tile is one of the best because the doors up top directly path to you and you can pull them off easily. If anything, you can even run Magus Anomaly as well to pull enemies in. The other arcane should be Elevate or Lockdown as a safety, but Lockdown isn't really needed if you took Air Burst. Remember, when your shield breaks, you should roll and throw down another shield grenade to pick up. They might be a bit hard to see in Black Energy, but the grab radius is pretty generous, and it's very easy to do with the 3 seconds unique shield gate that a Protea gives you. Yes, we got rid of our turrets, but that's because it's the only ability that doesn't help on this loadout. And there you go, the updated Protea Anchor Nuke. It still works with Titron, obviously, for infinite scaling, but we now have finally more utility options to make it work on base steel path with Contagion, or Fragger, or a bunch of other heavy-hitting 12x melees. And these are all infinitely more comfortable to use than Titron, being the slowest hammer of all time when that archetype is already slow. And if you rely entirely on Anomaly, but bring Eclipse, Roar, or Breach Surge, oh boy, it will be a fun one. As your 4 gives you 3 seconds in Volan Status Cleanse, you could also in theory drop Rolling Guard to fit more strength to scale Eclipse and Roar or Breach Surge better. Have fun! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get new information out always, as soon as possible like I'm done with covering all this new war stuff. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.